Hey, what up, Dream Chasers? It's Jason the Human, and today I want to talk about the evils of tracing and why you should never do it. Wait, that's not right. Hey, what up, Dream Chasers? It's Jacey, and I want to talk about how awesome tracing is and how you should always do it in every situation, whatever you can, no matter what. Okay, obviously this topic isn't that black and white, but for some reason it gets treated that way. And today I kind of want to just demystify tracing and talk about when it's cool to trace, when it's not as cool to trace, and sort of explain why. But real quick, if you'll indulge me for just 15 seconds, I want to tell you about the Dream Chaser Coloring Club. Join me on Patreon at the $3 tier or higher, and every month you'll have access to high-res coloring pages and a chance to win cool prizes like t-shirts, prints, mugs, and other stuff. Check the description below for details or go to patreon.com slash jcchase. So anyway, tracing. A couple years ago, I joined a bunch of art groups on Facebook because I thought it would be a nice escape from all the drama and arguing. Lol. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Facebook is a place online where people born before 1985 go to share pictures of their grandkids and fight over politics. Like I said, I've seen the topic of tracing come up a lot in groups like that. And even though the internet is a place for rational, nuanced discussion, for some reason this seems to be a divisive topic. First of all, let's talk about some of the history and facts about tracing. Tracing is a brand new concept invented by evil and lazy digital artists who will do anything for likes. No, that's not true. Tracing is a technique that's been around as long as art has. There's literally 40,000 year old cave paintings that are just a stencil of someone's hand. The great masters used the camera obscura, Disney used rotoscoping, and Norman Rockwell staged his own photos and then traced them. Artists trace. So why does this keep coming up? I think part of the reason is that people genuinely don't know how common tracing actually is. I also think we have really complicated copyright laws that make the whole issue extra confusing. And I also think that people just aren't asking the right questions about tracing. I see the question posed a lot as, is tracing bad? Or is tracing cheating? I think what people are really trying to ask is one of these four questions. When is tracing illegal? When is tracing unethical? When is tracing limiting your growth as an artist? And when is tracing demonstrating a lack of skill? Depending on the situation, the answers are going to be different. I'm going to discuss a few different scenarios on whether or not tracing is good or bad in that situation. To help simplify things, we'll focus on three artists. One is a beginner, one is an experienced artist, and one is a professional, meaning they get paid for their work, regardless of skill level. We're going to look at what they're tracing and the purpose of the artwork to help answer these questions. For this exercise, let's assume the beginner is doing everything for learning and personal use only, and they're not posting their work online. The experienced artist is publishing and promoting their artwork online, and the professional is getting paid. Quick disclaimer, these are all my opinions and my personal and very limited understanding of copyright law. And as you know, I am not a lawyer. Also, I want to point out that while some of this may pertain to using references and doing studies, the focus in this video is really just about tracing. Scenario 1. Tracing your own artwork. Okay, so let's get the easy one out of the way. An artist tracing their own work is totally legal, ethical, and legit in every way. Meaning, you drew something yourself and you want to ink it or transfer it to a canvas or whatever, you're good! You're not doing anything bad and you obviously know how to draw and save time. Good for you! Scenario 2. You're tracing someone else's artwork. Legally, if you're doing this just for fun and for practice and you're not publishing it anywhere or selling it, this is what we'd call personal use. If you have a sketchbook full of Trace DBZ characters and they never see the light of day, no one knows or cares that it exists. That's fine. That said, I'm pretty sure the second you post those on Instagram, it's technically plagiarism. And if you sell them, it's definitely illegal. Don't do that. Personal use is only really going to cover you if you actually keep it to yourself. Ethically, again, it's fine if you're a beginner and you're tracing for yourself. This is how most artists get started. We trace our favorite characters, then we get a little more comfortable and start drawing them freehand, then maybe we reimagine them in new poses and scenarios, then we make OCs, you get the idea. But again, posting stuff you trace is generally frowned upon for a number of reasons. If the original artwork or photo didn't belong to you and you post it without crediting the artist, that's just straight up theft. And by the way, credit to the artist is not crediting someone. Even if you do credit them properly, there's a chance the artist won't be too thrilled that you copied their work without asking. That's basically just a crappy repost if you think about it. You're not really promoting their artwork or supporting them, and you're getting likes for something that wasn't yours to begin with. And if you sell it, congratulations, you're an art forger and a thief. 
Will tracing art that doesn't belong to you hurt your growth as an artist? In the beginning, don't overthink it. You're getting your feet wet with art and you're having fun. If you want to get serious about art though, consider trying some original stuff and see where it goes. And if you're a professional and you're tracing other artists, yeah, legal and ethics stuff aside, you're not really going to help your professional art career by being known as a tracer. Does tracing art that doesn't belong to you prove that you're not that good of an artist? If you're brand new to art and you're tracing your favorite characters or famous people or whatever, that's great. It's fun and you might be better at tracing than you realized. But it's not necessarily a good demonstration of your skills. Not yet at least. As for professionals, there is nothing impressive about being an art thief. Scenario 3. Tracing a photo that you took yourself. Legally, if you took the photo yourself, you're in the clear to trace. You can trace it, post the artwork wherever, sell it, it's yours. Ethically too, you're fine. Is it going to limit your growth as an artist? If you're a beginner, tracing is a really helpful tool. You're training your hands to get used to drawing shapes and getting used to proportions, and that's great. And you can trace and still be improving all kinds of other skills, like line work, shading, painting. Staging a photo and setting up a composition is another really great skill to have as well. But if your goal is to get better at drawing what you see, I'd suggest relying on tracing less and less whenever possible. Try to get to a place where you're tracing over your references just to get a sense of basic angles and shapes and then redrawing it on your own. And all that said, as a professional, your goal might not even be to improve with every piece, but to make a deadline. So it's kind of a moot point, I guess. If you're a beginner and you're tracing photos, it might be kind of obvious. Your lines will most likely betray you. And that's okay, that's why we practice. If you're more advanced, you'll probably figure out how to trace more skillfully. You'll vary the line weight, you'll paint over the photo in a way that makes it unique. It takes a lot of skill to trace a photo and turn it into something really cool. And there's so many types of art that can involve some level of tracing in the process. Anyone arguing that the only real type of art is freehand drawing has a pretty narrow and boring view of art. Depending on how good the final piece is and what you've done with it, you could definitely have work that's worth paying for. Lots of professional artists use tracing as a tool to save time, and it doesn't make them any less of a real artist. Scenario 4. Tracing a photo or an asset that you've got permission to use. Legally, you're good if you've got permission. Just make sure that you actually have permission. If you got a license to use an image from a stock photo website, read the terms. You might not actually be allowed to transform the work or make any changes to it. So make sure you read those terms to know for sure. If someone asks you to draw their portrait and they send you a photo, make sure they're okay with you posting the work or selling it. Also, make sure that they own the rights to the photo and not some photographer who might sue you later. And if you're using a 3D asset, like something that might be built into an art program that was designed specifically for artists to reference, you're probably good there too. But again, read those terms and conditions. Ethically, as long as you have permission and you're not misrepresenting your art skills in any way, you're good. As for whether or not you improve or whether or not you're demonstrating your skills, See scenario three. Scenario five, tracing a photo that's public domain. Legally, if it's in the public domain, I'm pretty sure you're good. Public domain covers any creative works where the copyright has either expired or the original creator waived the rights. Ethically, you don't really have to worry about this one. Obviously, if the original artist is long dead, they're not really worried about royalties. You could mention that your work is traced on an ethical, I'm being honest that I didn't draw this level, but most people would probably get that you didn't come up with the Mona Lisa or whatever. And again, the same things apply in terms of, does it help me grow as an artist, and does this show my skills as the last couple scenarios. Scenario 6. Tracing a reference, but changing it a lot. Yikes, okay, legally, I can't really tell you. Obviously, if you're a beginner and you're not posting it and it's for personal use, again, you're fine. But in terms of posting it or selling it, it's a little messy. If you trace or copy something, but it becomes unrecognizable from the original, I think legally it comes down to prove it. There's a lot of debate about this topic and what percentage you have to change something to make it different enough legally. I've seen everything from at least 10% all the way up to 50%. Now, I'm not a machine, and I can't look at something and tell you the exact percentage difference by looking at it. I can only give you an opinion. And frankly, that's all a judge can do, too. Legally speaking, your safest bet is to make sure you have permission to use whatever you're tracing, even if you make changes. Ethically, I think this is even messier. If you trace something and changed it enough to be different legally, but you know you traced it, is that ethical? I honestly don't know. I want to say it depends on your intent, where your source came from, how transparent you are about the process. 
There are educational resources available for artists and tools designed to help you streamline things, and it's silly not to use those tools, whether you're learning or practicing or have a tight deadline. So I would say use your best judgment and don't do anything you feel like you have to lie about. Is tracing a reference but changing a lot going to keep you from growing as an artist? If you're a beginner and you're tracing references and making changes, I would say be careful. If your goal is to learn anatomy, but you're changing things a lot, you might be getting in your own way. But once you're more comfortable, you can make changes if you're building off of experience and knowledge and not just making wild guesses. And for a professional, assuming you're not doing anything illegal or unethical, you're probably not that worried if you're improving in this case, because again, your motivations are probably more deadline driven than improvement driven. Is tracing a reference and then changing it a lot demonstrating that you're not that good at art? If you're a beginner, it might be obvious which parts are traced and which parts you changed. It actually does take some level of skill to change what you're tracing. At this point, you're basically drawing. You might be tracing to get some basic shapes and proportions right, but you're coming up with original elements and adding to it, and that's awesome. And again, assuming you're not doing anything illegal or unethical, tracing is just a tool. Of course, you might still be called a hack if there are signs or proof that you're tracing as a professional, but I personally don't agree with that unless you're doing something shady. Hopefully this breakdown is helpful in determining when it's cool to trace and when not so much. If you think I missed anything or you disagree with this video, let me know in the comments. I'd actually like to point you to two other videos about tracing that I found really interesting. They focus a bit more on whether or not tracing is actually helpful to your growth as an artist or detrimental. One of them is a video by Dina Norland, who really is against tracing and explains why she thinks it's very limiting compared to doing studies and using references. And one is by Aaron Rutten, who talks about how tracing can help you save a lot of time and it's really just a jumping off point to get into rendering. I think both are really interesting viewpoints and have a lot of merit, and I think this topic really isn't that black and white. So definitely check out both of those videos. Anyway, I hope now we can put this whole is tracing bad thing to bed and focus on the real issues, like is digital art fake and am I a bad artist or is this just my art style? Anyway, that's it for me. Until next time, chase your dreams. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me and the channel and helping me chase my dreams. You guys are the best. If you're interested in becoming a patron and getting your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos, behind the scenes content, bloopers, and other art stuff, check out patreon.com slash chase chase. I'm drawing this really realistic drawing of this dot. Oh wait, <laughs> look at that realistic paw. <laughs> okay, you win. Bye YouTube.